Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on a classic wooden motor cruiser in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. up in the shed working on MV uh, pole and I've really advanced the, uh, the wheel to the point where I can pretty much start to put uh, the furniture into it next week. But today I'm on the ferry over to Vancouver. <laughs> Welcome back to MV Poem. It's so great to be back. Just, just loving all this. Anyway, so this week, um, definitely got to get some hinges on uh, these. Got to finish up um, refinishing, repainting the overheads. Got to come up with a solution for filling these old uh, screw holes, and we got some advancements on that. I'm going to put some ceiling in against the inside of the hull here. Ceiling on a boat is not this thing up here. It's called an overhead. Um, ceiling is actually paneling that goes in against the frames of the inside of the hull. And there's a bunch of reasons for that, but we'll get into that when we get to that. So, yeah, let me get changed and get to work. Okay, in a continuing effort to fix these old screw holes, um, I have taken the advice of a few uh, viewers who said, why don't you try a Forstner bit? Uh, so I went on and I bought a 3 8 Forstner bit. And to be fair, a Forstner bit at this size, to me, is pretty much a Brad Point drill bit. But anyway, we'll, we'll give this a shot and I'll use the um, guide block as well just to make sure we get the greatest possible opportunity for a clean hole. Well, I must say that's a pretty clean hole. And here we have a glued up bung with the original patina on it. And we'll let that set and see how it looks. Okay, well, I wait for that glue to dry. I'm gonna try another experiment. Here's a regular bung just put in, sanded off, uh, and I'm gonna try staining it. And uh, we'll see how that, in fact, I'm gonna stain this whole area because I sanded a little low. Now you can see this is not the exact match stain. This just happens to be something I had lying around. This is actually Minwax Sedona Red. Um, but uh, I'm just uh, gonna give this a go. Could use a little more, a little more brown in there, couldn't it? And just to be fair, here's the one that we did a little while ago. Um, oh my gosh, the color is completely different through the screen. It is much less red and much more golden. It'll be interesting when I start editing what this looks like. Anyway, um, that is the bung that still had the patina on the head of the bung. Now to be fair, I actually stained this just now to try and improve it because it had quite a pronounced white or much lighter ring around it. So, I mean, it's fine too, but as I said, I might as well just stick with the bungs. Anyway, this has gone on way too long. Next time I talk to you, this will all be done. Well. Mostly, anyway. At least the bungs will be in. Now begins the sanding. Two parts, one unpleasant and one very unpleasant. First, we've got to do all the finished sanding um, that I've been experimenting with on all the mahogany to bring it down, get in all the corners. It's going to be a pain. Get all those shiny drips off of there. Anyway, pretty straightforward and that'll be somewhat satisfying. Then I have to sand all of this overhead with white dust hanging down over me. I'll be wearing my dust mask. Uh, both windows are wide open, we're sealed off from the rest of the boat, and I'm set up with a vacuum. So, yeah, let's go. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, 
Okay, with the cabin sides pretty much done, this is an area I uh, did a little test stain on because I wanted to see how well it would work. There's actually 11 bungs in this piece here and it needs a little bit of improvement, but I think that staining the bungs solution is gonna be fine. Plus, I need to stain anyway to even out um, the color on these cabin sides. Anyway, so that was the easy part. Now the not so pleasant part. Oh, that has not been pleasant standing sanding overhead for an extended period of time um, it's amazing when you sand something or work on it in detail you really see the deficits that you really didn't see before anyway so I'm so glad I did that filling in the sanding and can repaint this um, it's going to be really nice really nice Whew. now all the corners okay. So ceiling. Ceiling is uh, paneling the inside of the frames. Um, I guess the word comes from sealing it in. I <clears throat> don't really know. It certainly doesn't mean the uh, surface that's above your head on a boat. So uh, this boat originally had ceilings. I can tell by the, all the tiny little uh, steel nails that were in here at one time. And to me, ceiling does two things. One, of course, it's aesthetic. It makes the inside of the hull clean in situations where the inside of the hull is going to be exposed more on that in a little bit but the other thing it does is it promotes better ventilation um, this is the outside hull and it's always going to be a little bit damp especially as you approach the waterline the waterline this boat is just above the sole um, so you've got to get good ventilation through there traditionally ceiling would leave an inch or so gap at the top and natural convection ventilation would come up and out and it would ventilate reasonably well um, all the boats that I'm interested in, um, in other words, Jordy, Zephyrus, and Poem here, I force ventilate by actually extracting air from the bilge. And what that'll do is it'll reverse this basic process and it'll suck dry, warm air from inside the cabin down in behind and down against all this planking into the bilge and away. Um, I think that has a bunch of advantages. Uh, one, it doesn't bring bilge air into the boat. Two, it brings the driest possible air in uh, to do the ventilation. And three, it provides uh, really good ventilation in the engine space. Uh, that is a vacuum ventilation rather than, than putting air in, it's sucking air out so that if there's engine smells, etc., or excess heat, it's withdrawn. Uh, in the case of a gasoline engine, of course, it would be the blower that runs uh, for five minutes before you start the engine to make sure there's no uh, uh, fuel. Um, so. I'm going to put a ceiling in here. I'm not sure I'm ever going to see it. Where we are here is behind where the dinette is going to be. Um, as a result, it's basically going to be relatively hidden. As we move further back, this section here up against the galley is behind the dinette, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to put a relatively shallow cabinet in here because every inch of storage is super valuable. So it's not necessarily that I'm going to be seeing the ceiling. However, it's going to be visible when you open the tops of the dinette's um, benches which to access the storage underneath. Now the storage for this is gonna be mostly bedding and luggage, um, I think. So it'd be nice if that was a sort of a clean space. It'll be mahogany, 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 and well, nice painted ceiling. So I think it's worth doing. Next comes the bitter pill. I'm going to use very, very cheap wood for this. It would be really nice to go out and have some nice uh, cedar dressed up in tongue and groove V-joint. That'd be beautiful, but for one-tenth or less the cost, I can get that horrible uh, hardware store pre-packaged wainscoting, uh, which will work just fine. And to confess, that's exactly what I put in Zephyrus five years ago, and good paint keeps it perfect. Um, it's amazing, even though it's just cheap, not a pine. Uh, I do seal the knots so that they don't bleed, bleed through, but I will not prime the backside, which will annoy many of you. Again, I am a great believer in making sure that wood can breathe. Um, if you seal all the sides of a piece of wood, water is still going to get in. 
it just is, and now it can't get out. So, as I've always said, wood doesn't mind getting wet at all. It just doesn't like staying wet. So, if you find a way to make sure that humidity can breathe back out of a piece of wood, that piece of wood will last a lot, lot longer. It doesn't mean it's stable. Now, for instance, if you dampen one side of a piece of wood and the other side is sealed, yes, it's not going to stay flat. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter because it's very weak wood and it's all nailed on. But there are cases where I will make exception to that particular, I won't call it a rule. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. ourselves. I did want to talk about one more thing before I start putting boards on here, and that's tea tree oil. Tea tree oil. T-E-A-T-R-E-E-O-I-L. You get it in these tiny little vials uh, at your pharmacy or wherever you get your tea tree oil. This is an amazing stuff. I don't know why, I don't know the chemistry of it, it's a natural oil, but one drop of this in a relatively large space will absolutely stop all mold. I know this because when I used to store my Airstream over the winter in Nova Scotia in the cold, I would just put a little dish of it and in the spring absolutely no mold. The year before, let me tell you. So it's magic stuff, you may already know this. So I actually spray the inside of all the hulls and in the build of, of um, Jordy and I will now also with poem with tea tree oil every season. Um, that little gap I leave at the top, I let it sort of wash down inside. So I've made up a batch of tea tree oil and water. Now in this, I don't know, 750 milliliters or so, wow, I just used metric, there's maybe 30 drops of tea tree oil. You do not need much. Um, but now I can soak the inside, if I can get this sprayer to work. There we go. Soak the inside of all of this, and I have a couple of seasons guaranteed no mold back here. It's a just, I, I just believe in it that much. Oh, right then. And again, it doesn't have to be in intimate contact with the wood you're looking to protect. It just needs to be in the same environment. Part of the magic of this stuff. Okay. I'm gonna get started with some wood and then we'll talk about things like butt blocks while we're underway. Now before I can cover this up, I have to finish bolting the bulkhead to the frame beyond here with some quarter inch lag bolts. So let's get going on that. I'm putting quite a few because again, it uh, provides a lot of the strength in the bracing of the boat. Okay, with that done, I have to find a way to support the ends of the ceiling uh, boarding here because of course I can't get to that next frame. So I've ripped off a couple of pieces of uh, Douglas fir uh, into battens, uh, as long as I don't really feel like steam bending anything just now, and uh, this will do the trick. And I'm gonna to have to put a couple of screws just to keep it secure. Galvanized, of course, because it's going into the hull. Okay then, so I know you're all familiar with this stuff or something like it. It is absurdly cheap. Uh, lumberyard, not even lumberyard, home center type um, B-joint tongue groove paneling. Uh, sold as wainscoting for people to make their basements look oh so Victorian. Now there's two problems with this. Well, there's a bunch of problems with this. The two major problems with it are the fact that they put a nice piece in the top where you can see it and every other piece in the pack is a wreck. Frankly, this one isn't as bad as usual. The other problem with it is it's pine and the knots are going to bleed. Now I'm going to paint this with uh, Petit's um, easy epoxy, the same stuff I paint on the exterior of, of boats. It's a fantastic paint um, and it's incredibly resilient to knots bleeding through. Still, I'm going to uh, just give them a touch um, with a um, shellac primer uh, to make sure that I don't get haunted by that later. Okay, this isn't, this isn't the worst stuff I've ever seen, you know? Okay then, so it's on with the paneling. I'm um, starting with my first piece with the groove up, not the tongue up. Um, the reason for that is I want it all to be aligned with the deck. 
Um, and I don't want to see that extra tongue sticking up. Well, I'm never going to see it. But anyway, this is just sort of a rule of thumb. Now you might say, Peter, are you not going to scribe this to the corner? Well, no, I'm not. Partly because, well, there's these bolts in the way. There's going to be a trim piece that covers this. Possibly. Anyway, so here's my inch airspace. Skip a few for now. Now this is slightly curved, but of course, this being very soft wood, there's no trouble making that curve. There we go. Now you may have noticed I didn't put any nails in the bottom of this board yet. Well, anytime I'm installing anything tongue and groove, I don't fasten the leading edge of the last board yet, just in case it's difficult to get the next groove to engage. This way there's a little slop here, and as I pull it together and drive the nail for the next board, I can also finish nailing this one. Now, we have this to deal with. An old abandoned through hull that I'm not going to pull out of the hull just yet. So I've just made up a simple to work with piece here, and I'm gonna mark it there. And then I'm just gonna mark it here, taking into account that the uh, groove is not fully engaged. So before this goes on, let's talk about this butt block. Um, butt blocks, <laughs> the bane of my existence. Anyway, uh, what it does is hold, um, or at least butt connect these two planks, which meet in the middle of this butt block, lots of fasteners, etc. fine. But that's not the problem today. The problem today is it completely blocks any ventilation in this, um, in this bay. So when I put this piece on, I'm gonna have to drill some ventilation holes in it so that this section can ventilate just by convection. And when I put the next one on way down here, I'm gonna have to drill some holes in it so it will create ventilation down into my force ventilation system. Pretty straightforward. The next one will be a little more complicated. As you can see, it's a long taper. So I have to measure and cut a long taper out of it. The upside of it is I can use the cutoff below to keep the same relationship going. So that's not so bad. Okay, so you can see the problem now. Uh, the next plank will be underneath the sole. And if you've been following along, you know that this sole doesn't actually fit the frames very well. So actually, I have to cut a little more off and it'll fit a little bit better. Not that that really matters because there will be a trim piece here eventually. Okay, so the sole's gotta come off. Oh, I didn't think I'd be working in the bilge again so soon. Okay, it's too late to run the power tools, uh, so I'm going to carry on and try to stain. I was going to go to the hardware store tomorrow and buy this Minwax, not necessarily the gel stain, but mahogany, um, because my blended colors uh, seem pretty close. However, I've just found this um, <laughs> liter of uh, gel stain that Lloyd had left on the boat in mahogany. Now, I've actually never worked with gel stain my whole life. I always actually frankly i thought it was kind of a novelty so i'm gonna try it um yeah well let's just get going here now it's obviously very 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 dark when it first goes on um so let's just get it on and then do a wipe off i gotta open this door well i'd have to say gel stain is incredibly easy to use 
Okay, I'm only going to do this much of it and uh, see how it settles in and then rub it off and see how close it is. This is a good place to test it because I can close the door again, uh, which is still unsanded, and get a rough idea of how well it matches. It has been absolutely howling wind and rain all day today. Okay, we'll let that uh, sit for a bit and then rub it out. Uh, I might have waited a bit too long. Woohoo! That's okay, I can always soften it up again. Wow. Uh, well, it's darker, but it's gorgeous. Um, I don't know if you're catching the light there, uh, but that is exactly, exactly what I would have dreamed of, dreamt of. Wow, that's fantastic. Gel stain, and so easy. I left it on a bit long though. Anyway, okay, 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 let me get busy. <laughs> the instructions say three minutes, so you gotta work pretty quick. If you wanna get a reasonable area done. Um, I'm actually really excited about this. This is turning out to be a really uh, successful stain. Okay, time to start rubbing that off. Absolutely gorgeous. This panel will be the uh, indicator of how well it uh, evens out color, because of course this is a mess. I'm sold. Holy mackerel. Um, of course, there's, there's still some... Um, faults here but there were a lot of faults here before so well I can tell you so far I am so 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 pleased with this it's working out really really well um, it's a totally different technique to work with gel stain those of you who have are familiar with it it's it's very good for blending in because as it thickens up it stains some more so in some places I've been able to do some blending I'll wait till tomorrow and then there's better light and uh, this is actually dry to do the final uh, blending of some spots here, but you know, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's three bungs there Pretty hard to see now two more there uh, There's a whole fleet of them up here <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really 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 pleased. Okay, let's finish this up Okay, so I'm in the folks are preparing to put the hinges on these doors and uh, I've dry fit them and it's much easier to do uh, the mortising, the chisel work on the bench to both the door and the frame. Uh, but that means I do have to mark both the door and the frame when it's in place. So what I'm doing here, and I'm just going to measure down, I'm going to say four inches. And I'm going to put a tiny little mark here on both the door and the frame so that they stay in alignment. And... Um, I have to make it small because of course the, the mortise for the hinge is only going to be tiny on here and I don't want it to uh, be left seeing as these are already finished. Okay, so I've clamped the door frame to the door in the open position so I can lay the hinge in here. But before I get started, I'm just going to clamp this whole arrangement to this heavy piece of wood down here to try and balance it out a bit for me so I'm not struggling with it quite so much. There we go. Okay, now it's self-supporting. All right, so if I move you over where you can just sort of see what I'm up to here. I'm going to set the bottom hinge at uh, six inches from the bottom. And I just set it on here, um, lined up exactly, exactly with the pin centered with the gap between the door and the frame. And that's critical, otherwise it won't open and close straight. Now this is a technique that I've used over the years with, I would say, very good success, but I'm not saying it's the only way to do it. And of course, a quick center drill with my auto centering bit. I'll toss a screw in there to hold that. Now these are stainless steel screws. Uh, in time, of course, I'll replace these with brass. Actually, more likely bronze, because I'm going to try to age this brass a little bit. I've heard some techniques uh, using uh, vinegar and salt, or vinegar, yeah, something like that. Anyway, so we'll set up for the next one. There we go. And once that's aligned, 
I can now mark it out. Uh, but before I do that, I'll just drill the rest of the holes. So what I'll do is I take my utility knife. In Canada, we buy this brand called Olfa. I don't know if they're available in the States. They're fantastic, by the way. Um, and I'll just scribe along the edge of the hinge, being careful not to exceed the hinge. Okay, and with that done, I can remove the hinge. All marked out. Okay, let's uh, gain out this little mortise. What I can say is keep your chisel sharp. Oh yeah. So, um, the little lines we made with the uh, knife are basically just guide marks. They're not deep enough. So we gotta deepen them. If this had been softwood, um, that would be all you need, but we gotta get these nice and deep. And then to take the bulk of material out, just a successive of angled cuts, exactly the depth of <laughs> the frame of the hinge, but uh, this is kind of arbitrary. And undoubtedly the most satisfying part of this Okay, and now we just clean it up. Gaining hinges is one of the few places that I condone using my hand as a hammer because it's very gentle. And there we are. Absolutely perfect. Love it. <laughs> and I have hinges. Um, I don't have knobs yet, um, and I'm not going to put a screw in just to be able to hold them until I know exactly how I want to set that all up. But it's fantastic. These will sit against the, the uh, cabinet uh, that are going to be in here, and I'm very happy with them. Very happy with them. Whew! Well, welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you this week from Calister Brewing in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I'm joined this week by my very good friend, Owen. Most of you Hello. Will, will remember. However, uh, if you've joined the show recently, uh, this is Owen, a wooden boat enthusiast, a good friend of mine, and also a bit of a car buff. Quite a bit of a car buff, actually. Sure. You sure? <laughs> okay, let's talk about what we're drinking. I'm drinking. Uh, we're drinking Oceania Hazy Pacific IPA. Hazy? You know. Hazy. A hazy. Yeah. And you? I'm drinking short and stout, dry Irish stout. And uh, it's not hazy. It's not hazy. Cheers. Thank Let's you. see what we think. It's a hazy, so I love it. And your stout? It isn't a hazy, so I love it. Exactly. Uh, anyone who knows anything about the English despise anything resembling hazy, and Owen fits into that category quite firmly. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's right. Anyway, do we have a winner for the Travels of Jordy? Beer of the Week, shirt thingy, whatever. Peter, do yeah. we have a winner? Tim, Tim Vuckman. That's Tim. Tim Vuckman. Tim Vuckman. 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 Tim Vuckman. Apologies, Tim. Well, first of all, congratulations for having won the t-shirt. Congratulations, t Tim Vuckman. The apology is because I think this is probably the 723rd time Owen has said that in the last two days because it's taken us two days and five pubs to get this shot. I do believe this one's going to be it. Uh, it is. It is. Um, we finally got it quite enough late. Anyway. So congratulations, and Tim Vuckman. Tim Vuckman. Get a hold of me. You've won a Travels Ready t-shirt. Uh, I think you know what to do. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Cheers to Tim. To Tim. To exactly. Tim Vuckman. Uh, certainly the most notorious winner of a Travels Ready t-shirt <laughs> ever. No doubt about it. Okay. So, what I do want to talk about. Coming to Vancouver and having a chat with Owen um, has given me the opportunity to make sure that Poem, MV Poem, is going to be available, as I had hoped, 
for people to come aboard, for all of you to have the opportunity to come aboard Poem over this summer. Exactly how it's going to happen, I'm still not sure, but Owen has agreed to be part of making sure that the boat can be in Falls Creek, Vancouver, uh, which is a fantastic, fantastic location. And I will be there a bunch of the summer uh, aboard Jordy, raft it up, and we're going to find a way that we can do half a dozen, a dozen, something like that um, stays aboard uh, for all of you. And I'm not quite sure how that's going to work yet, but at least now it's possible. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Owen. Uh, oh, Any time. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Cheers. So Cheers. Th this is huge news for me, by the way. All we need now is the much-loved, much-appreciated... Oh, my, my favorite part of the show is... Word of the Week. Ah, yes, of course, of course. Love it. Uh, a couldn't, fan from way back. Couldn't live without it. Exactly. Um, so how about I put you on the spot for a word this week? Yes, because I haven't thought about this before, and we haven't shot this before. We've, uh, this is all fresh. So I think the Word of the Week is uh, on board, or two words of the week if you prefer, on and board. How or... fitting that is for what I just said. Clever. Yeah. Clever, witty, and very, very on the spot. Okay, so if you'd like to win a Travels with Jordy uh, t-shirt, simply use the word or words on board uh, in a comment down below, and I'll or, pick it. Or Tim Vuckman. Honestly, I, now that he said it, I have to do it. <laughs> Tim, I hope you can forgive me. Okay, use either the word on board, on board, or Tim Vuckman. In a comment down below, and uh, I'll pick a random over the next weeks with the comments that I'll pick you. You'll win a Travel Ready t-shirt. Cheers! Cheers! See you next crazy week. Tim? Look.